Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Jaswinder Singh and today I'll be talking about data lakes and yes building data lakes using a new framework which is called Hoodie. So today we will be discussing what this provides, what is this new framework and what all problem it can solve for us. Okay, so be ready and let's get started with this video because it's gonna be very interesting. Okay, let's talk about data lakes first. Or if you don't know a lot of about data lakes, just go ahead and read. I have some of my previous videos, you can go and understanding on that one. But let me just start with a quick intro on that one. So you have a, a lot of data which you are getting from different places and all. And then when, uh, when we talk about that, okay, when you want to get information on that one data, it is if in different places, it's very hard to get, get that information or get those uh, uh, business insights from that. So what generally or what is the uh, things, what all the companies or most of the uh, companies who are in this data business, they do, they build data lake. And data lake is, uh, you can consider it as a, as a storage where you can bringing everything from different silos and putting into a centralized storage. That is what we call data lake. Yeah, so we'll not be talking much on this data lake part on this one. But yeah, this is what uh, we a nutshell is data lake where data is you can central putting all data into centralized storage and then using different tools and technologies to do uh, to get analytics and get information out of it. Today's topic is basically understanding a framework on top of data lake. So before I go in a, a bit more deeper in that framework, so I'll just give you a uh, problem statement what happens or what is the current challenge with the current data lake which we have it. So data lakes are good, means we are able to store all the things, all of our data from different places into data lake. But when we talk about traditional uh, way of uh, inserting data into our system, like we talk about databases, so it's a, uh, it has a feature like where we have, where we can insert data, we can update data, we can delete records, we can update uh, records and all those stuff. But when we when this same records, when you move into a data lake kind of thing, uh in in, in if, if you can take an example of uh, uh, aws uh, s3 based data lake where we are storing data and all as a file structure into our uh, s3 storage so when you want if you want to do any updates or deletes into this data lake it's it's very hard it's not straightforward you have to lot, do a lot of things you have to do a lot of uh what do you say a lot of uh, uh here and there means if you want to achieve that you have to do a, a lot of duplication of data even you have to go and update those uh, uh, records or files which is there because it's a file based story so it's not like a database kind of thing so to uh, and if and these are the they are this is just one of the complexity which i talked about on updating the files and all but assume that if you because if if, if you have uh, understanding on data so it is all the data is stored in the files so if I want to update any specific record or any specific uh, ID, I have to go in that file, I have to update that file so that my file has uh, all those new information and then I can retrieve those information when I'm querying the data. But that, that is uh, uh, one of the way, but it doesn't cover all the other issues like concurrency issues, like when you're updating, if there is someone else you're also updating file open issues there are, there are a lot of different issues which you need to tackle by yourself if you are handling it these updates and all or previously people used to do they used to create partitions they uh, override the full partitions of a data we are storing the uh, data so to overcome all of these things so there is a, a, a framework which is uh, uh, built by apache apache hoodie we call it as a uh, upserts and inserts on top of Hadoop. So that's what we say. So Hadoop, Absurd, Delete and Insert. That's the full form of Hoodie. So yeah, so we store all those, uh, uh, means uh, Hoodie is like a framework on top of data lake where it can do all those uh, whatever complexities. It can hide all those complexities from you and it can do all those things. It can manage all those files. It can manage uh, uh, all those deletes. It can track it that uh, what, has been up, what has been updated, what has been inserted. So this allows with the help of hoodie now you can get transactional feature into your data lake so previously you were just appending into your data lakes now you can even add a transactional data, uh, records and all so if there's any updates happen which is generally the case when we talk about any data warehouse or some kind of solution where you're doing a lot of updates inserts and deletes 
So all these changes now can be applied into Data DX with the help of Hooti. And this have a lot of different use cases where people wanted to get the updates on your and wanted to retrieve updated data. They don't have to wait, they don't want to wait for the bad job students to finish and then they can retrieve data. So this is all uh, the things which we, we used to do when we want to do the bits now. But with Hudi into a picture, it is able to do all those stuff without a lot of uh, here and there. Okay, so let's see the details of uh, Hudi framework, what exactly it is and where does it sits in the data lake kind of uh, um, architecture. Okay, so if you see this um, uh, this uh, high level architecture where you will just uh, on the helicopter view of things how exactly it works. So you see left hand side so all the different data sources which generally all the organization have. So it could be different database, could, could be RDBMS or in uh, NoSQL databases. You have uh, you can have microservices or you can have event streams and all which is give which is sending data to your data lake. So if you see a downsize the the below part is lake storage which could be s3 or could be hdfs or this data lake can be built on top of other cloud provider different type of storage and all either from uh, google or from uh, um, other azure and all okay so they have their own tools and frameworks to store data so all this data is getting stored into your lake storage now till now it will have been there before the hoodie we are able to store it and then it was coming in up and mode only means Whenever new data comes in, updates comes in, we generally go ahead and store into a, our storage uh, tools. Okay, but in case we want to update it, so we have to do a lot of work to get the update, and that is very, it is not very optimal and require a lot of effort to do that. Here, if you see hoodie which uh, sits on top of this lake storage, or, or you can say that which sits uh, in between the lake storage and your access layer, uh, which uh, overwrite all the or which is uh, like a uh, mm, uh, overlay on top of this lake storage which take care of the metadata information or uh, updating or if there is anything comes in for the new data and then it will track all those information any updates comes in and deletes comes in and inserts comes in so that it's keep track of that and it keeps uh, having that changes so uh, with the respect of data coming into a system and if there's any update happens so who will take care of updating that file who will take care of finding that record that okay which file I need to update and then which file i need to have a uh, track it so that if in the future if anyone want to access so they can access we'll see more details in the ne next slides on this one but just understand that it sits on top of it on top of the data which we have stored and then you can when you're accessing it you can access in a Hoodie format, uh, the storage format is similar, like it, it, it is just same as Parquet format when you store data, but when you're accessing it, you can access directly from top of these tables. Okay, so yep, so you can access through Athena, you can access it through directly Hive and all if you have uh, on your on a premise setup and all, and then you can build your pipelines on top of it using Spark or Flink or your uh, just Hive with pipeline. Okay. So let me see. So yeah, so this is the different components when we talk about the hoodie uh, uh, details. Okay, so these are different components when you say you can think about that hoodie spark data sources. So let me talk about that. Uh, okay, you have different data sources in your system. Okay, and this data source is sending data. So once the data is moved in, uh, coming from a data data source to your system, so it creates three different types of files. So as the data is coming in, it just first index all the data so it is stored as the index that where uh, the data is in which file so you know that okay once the data is coming it is storing in a file format in a assume let assume in a parquet format so all data is getting stored in s3 in a parquet format then what we does it creates an index file which understand that okay which or which it just note down that where exactly all this data in which file uh, what all range of data is stored okay so it knows that this file holds the data from this uh, 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 record from record 0 to record 100 and then record 101 to the other next set of 100 is stored in this file so all these things it has it has indexed it okay and then there's a uh, data files as is just a story and third one is timeline metadata okay timeline metadata is what to just uh, hold the metadata information so that where, which uh, which version of it are you are writing where is it uh, so so uh, this will make sense 
for them when you're trying to read data in an incremental fashion when the update happens so it is like a holding your uh, uh, stream of information on data in the time and data metadata format okay and then so this is the place where hoodie uh, internally how do you store the files and then on top of that you can read it uh, it, it provides a different uh, ways of reading data you can directly call it using spark or using presto or hive queries you can do it and if you're using aws based uh, setup and all you can use glue and all the other services to read this data in the optimal manner okay so now how exactly hoodie allows you to put overlay all those things so it has uh, uh, means when you talk about that we have a data lake and then when you try to read data from data lake either you create hive tables or you can read those files in a uh, by accessing those storage which is stored in a file format so all the data is stored in a file format either it's in s3 file format or an hdfs file format and when you want to read the data you will put at the hive table or any other uh, tables on top of it when if you want to read in a common fashion or if you want to read in that data file you can just query that file and get that information but if there's any update comes in then you have to uh, apply that update so how would you handle this it also provide different type of storage for uh, it's uh, uh, for uh, tracking that metadata information and based on the uh, use case you can use those type of storage so there are two type of storage which provides one is copy on write and other is merge on write. So let's first talk about copy on write. Copy on write, as the name suggests, if you have a file which is storing an information and there's a new update for that information comes in, so it will create a new copy of that same uh, file, okay, with the by updating that specific record or those things. So you will have two files with similar information, but the latest the new file will have a latest uh, updated information okay so and since it is copying so while reading uh, you can read this latest snapshot and it will be highly um, optimized while reading because you're just copying it and when you read you can read this file directly okay so but in this case you are creating a duplicate of record which when uh, some after some time there's a, or not of something there's an automated compaction which keeps on running which is merging those file in a backend but it, it is not known to you okay so this is one of the storage which it provides we'll talk more on that one how exactly it does the second one is merge on read now merge on read is basically when it, you tried a new or updated information into data leak so what it does it instead of writing it is instead of copying that uh, file it will just keep track that information in a log file okay so assume this update comes in for a particular record it will create a new log file with that information so it will just create it so it will not duplicate the record but while reading it will merge that log file and the previous information and then it will give you the data okay then it will give in latest information so if there's an update happen so first it will uh, try to merge all the log files and that the existing file which you have in data in and then it will provide the information that this is the updated information so updated one will come from the log file and then those uh, non-updated one will come from the actual file it is also it will also provide its uh, uh, information which uh, means uh, in a optimized manner we'll see how exactly you can read it from here but it would be a bit uh, slower while reading because it needs to merge both those information in the runtime okay so let's first focus on the copy on write okay okay if you see in the copy on uh, write thing okay so you see that okay uh, means i have mentioned two different type of queries you can do you can do snapshot based query you can do incremental query okay this is one of the feature which uh, hoodie provides okay so uh, let's assume let's take an example so i have a uh, one system i got some inserts that a b c d e so these three insert or five inserts comes into my system at time zero when you say it's a commit time as a time zero and that time i it will uh, in a data lake it will create three different files assume three different files have been created file zero has a b file one has cd records and file two has record number e okay these three id uh, this ids are there in different different files at time zero okay so at this time when i go ahead and i can uh, i would like to do a query at this time you will see if a snapshot query would be this one uh, like when you do a directly give me a uh, when you try to read it uh, in a snapshot manner you will get all the same record a b c d e and then if there's an incremental query you also get the record value as a b c d e so there is nothing different between both of them because it's the first insert which happened now assume 
there is a update happen where I have updated my D from uh, D to D dash and A to A dash. Okay, so this is what I did. So once I do the update from D to D dash, you see at, at time one, like I commit time one, I, it has created a new file which is called file zero. So it's a copy and write. So remember I mentioned that copy and write will do that one. So in that case, it has created new file. That file has name zero dash and then it in that one, it has copied everything which was in file zero and then with the A record which has updated from A to A dash, it has updated that value to A dash. Okay. So this value has been updated and same case uh, it will try to find that okay where is d it will search in oh d is in file one so it will go into file one and create a new file which is called one dash and then it will create a uh, two records which is the existing record it will copy it and d since it's updated it will update as a d dash so these two files will be created when you do an update now in this case if you do a query so like assume if i want to get a latest snapshot from this and i query from this table so i'll get a dash b c d dash e because the latest updated record along with that if i want to do an incremental query means what happened to last uh, few seconds so it will say that, okay there are two updates which happen and you can incrementally get this data so this incremental query is very helpful when you are trying to do an incremental based uh, processing means uh, if any new thing comes in every every 15 seconds you are doing processing or every 15 minutes you are doing a processing assume so you can already get that in last 15 minutes what has changed and will give only a change record for you and then you can do your processing uh, means before that what you have to do you have to go and you have to check that what has been changed in that st that specific time you have to keep track by yourself by a particular field in your data lake and say okay from this time to this time how many record comes in what is the update and all those stuff and then you do it so this is all being taken care by hoodie itself okay now let's uh, move further assume that we have created one more update and this update is e to e dash and a dash i have upgraded again upgraded to a double dash okay so then it will go first check oh where is the a dash so it will see okay file zero is there which has a dash so at time two means the next time when you do an update at that time it will create a new file called file zero double dash and that will have a double dash and b okay so as you see this is what it is and then there's a new insert oh sorry um yeah there's a new insert called f okay and you have changed e to e dash so these two things happen at one time so then for it will try to find where is the e and it is in the file 2 so it will create a new file called file 2 dash and then it will update as a uh, record e to e dash and then the new insert will go as a f in the same file okay so straightforward so this is what it does now let's see if i do a query snapshot query will give me all those information the latest snapshot and whereas incremental will give me what is the last change so a dash e dash and f okay. so this is what copy on write okay this is very good because when you're trying to read it it is mostly being used you have you are just it is you just need to read this latest file would you just will uh, although there is a duplicate file created duplicate data has been created but when you're trying to read it you will be very fast and all only thing is that while writing it will take more longer because it needs to copy and all those things so it is good when you are trying to write up uh, um, uh, when, when you have a uh, very uh, read optimized uh, use case you want to read those files but if you have a lot of write so this might not be helpful because write will take longer time to finish okay so now let's uh, uh, see the next one when you say uh, merge on read okay so in this one, uh, um, it will take three different type of queries, snapshot, increment, and read optimize. We'll talk more on that one. Okay. So let's take a similar use case. I am doing an insert, same insert. So it will create three files, same as previously. You'll have file 0, 1, 2. And then you will see that you have, when you try and do a snapshot query, you'll get that. Incremental query should get the same thing. And read optimize should also get the same thing. Now let's move. Here there's an update happen. Okay, in this case, I am updating a record from D to D dash and A to A dash. In that case, now there is a change. You see, previously we were creating new files, but in merge only, as I mentioned, it will create a log file. It will just keep tracking the new changes. So it will track that A has changed from A dash, A to A dash, and D has changed from D to D dash. So it will create a log files, and that log file will hold this information. And while reading, it will merge this log information with the file, existing file, and do that one. 
So in let's see, if I do the snapshot based query, I'll get the latest information, incremental, I'll get the latest information, what has changed, but read optimized, I will still get the old information. Now what this is read optimized is, read optimized is basically talking about that in merge on read, if you want to do a high, uh, means if you have a use case where you want a uh, uh, lot of reads uh, in a regular fashion, so you can write in optimal manner because it is not copying data that is a good thing but when i'm trying to read it so instead of merging both the files because if you merge and then read it it might take longer time but if you need high latency you can still read in optimized manner but that will read you the old data means still the files where the all the files have been compacted and merged so it will read only from the file it will not read you from the log so it will not go into a log and all means unless the logs has been uh, when you run the compression all the logs will be merged together and it will create a new file with the latest information okay so let's see the uh, if what happened when you do update and inserts so it will again create a new log file so you see that okay from the time to it will it has just updated the same existing log file it is just adding one more just tracking that okay there is a under change happened which is from a dash to a double dash it has created one more log in the same log file it has added one more entry into that one and then you have added make a change to e to e dash and then you have added a new record called f so this is what it does it will create a new log file and then add the e dash and f in that log file it has not changed to log one file because there is no update happened to d1 d dash okay now let's see if you do a snapshot query you will get latest type will merge both of them incremental query will give you what has changed and read optimize still give you the same thing because you still have the files which has holding it there you don't create a new files uh, so you have the file which has the old data the same commit time so there's no file it will read from the files only now let's see when we run a compression compaction okay so now now when you do a compaction what it does it will just merge all those logs and it will put into a file so now the file has been created you can run manual compaction or it will automatically run based on your configuration or those things and then at that time you will have a file with this information and in this time when you read data it should be updated for the read optimized as well okay and incremental will not give you any data because there is no incremental for this yeah so this is all about how copy and read and merge and write works okay so there are a lot of uh, things uh, sorry copy and write and merge and read works okay there are a lot of things which you can um, uh, do with hoodie i would not be covering everything for that one but this is a high level overview when you try to implement data lakes with hoodie kind of uh, framework this is uh, one of the uh, things which it provides you can definitely go ahead and do that a lot of companies are doing it and it has been highly optimized and tested so there are different frameworks as well uh, apart from hoodie like iceberg delta uh, lake which is from databricks and then there's a um, other open source like iceberg which i mentioned so you can uh, try doing that as well as well but my favorite is hoodie because it's doing a lot of things for you it has uh, support from a lot of uh, different uh, open source community it is open source you don't have to pay for that part, and it is highly reliable with a lot of features called with concurrency control or a lot of other things so yeah so this is uh, what i would like to cover uh, for the hoodie you can go ahead and you can explore more on that one Hopefully this video has given you a, uh, a bit understanding on that one. Definitely uh, uh, this will, uh, this is the things which all the companies are going through. And this is what a trend it's coming forward when you talk about transactional data lakes. So till now we are talking about data lakes, but now it is having this transactional feature using Woody. So that's what we call transactional data lakes. So yeah, if that's good. So uh, keep sharing this video to more lot other people so that they can get this information as well, or maybe they can learn from this video and something. And yeah, uh, if you wanted to get more videos like this, do subscribe my channel. Till then, goodbye guys and happy uh, weekend. Yes, bye.